All right, I know I need to still catch up on a lot of updates, but I just kind of had something on my mind I wanted to talk about a little bit, and it's very important, and not just for me, I think for everybody, but as far as where it led me, and as, um, it was the first thing, you know, it was the first real truth, it was the first real thing that got me on my current path that I've been on for the last uh, probably five years or so, and it was big, it's, uh, it's the whole foundation of everything. Everything that came along after was big too. Um, a lot of things, but this was what literally changed my mind. Um, and it took a while. It was a, a while in the waiting, and I, I'm pretty sure some of you know what I'm referring to. Um, it's a just something that changes the person, you know, it changed me so dramatically. It changed me to begin with in a negative way, well, maybe positive and negative because the experience was so powerful. It was so, you know, and it was like, it, it, I never thought it was going to end. I thought I'm going to have to live, what, every single night wondering if I'm going to be very rudely, abruptly woken up in the middle of the night and have to go through all that again and, and for the rest of my life, a few times a week. I, okay, so... That part was scary to, to wander and think about. Luckily, it eventually kind of faded away and happened less and less and less after about a year's time or so. Um, what I'm referring to, if you don't know, is I would wake up with sleep paralysis, where basically you wake up out of sleep and you cannot move. You cannot speak. You could barely breathe. All you could do is kind of look around, and it's the most frightening thing you will ever, ever deal with. Though it could branch out and become something different. You could have an out-of-body experience from the sleep paralysis state. And this happens, I find, when you relax. Though relaxing while you're dealing with sleep paralysis is probably one of the hardest things in life to ever try to attempt to do. But if you do have sleep paralysis happen often and you're used to it, then it might be a lot more likely that you are be capable of doing something similar to relaxing and for what it would happen so often to me I got annoyed and I got almost literally pissed off I would wake up out of sleep tired of course probably not caught up on sleep from all the other times that it had happened and having to go to school and not being able to sleep in and such I would wake up in the middle of the night and literally in my head because you can't talk or speak or anything be yelling in my head saying Oh, not again, please, won't it just stop, please, and you have to wait it through, and so once you experience it so many times and, and such, you get to the point to where you, you know it's going to subside, it's going to fade away, it just, um, you just got to wait it out, basically, and that kind of sucks, you know, so, um, what will happen, though, if you are capable of relaxing, and in this case I wasn't relaxing, I was just used to the whole experience, and I would just be kind of closing my eyes and waiting it out because it's um, probably a better idea to close your eyes unless you're really interested in maybe possibly seeing something you've never seen before that might enter um, your new perspective of a new vision in different um, whatever realities or dimensions or whatever you might be experiencing at that particular time sometimes you don't see anything sometimes it's just a, a horrible experience of the body and then that goes away that's bad enough but sometimes there's uh other things <laughs> mixed into the whole equation of it that make it um 10 times as worse probably but one thing that did make it a different path that i would have would happen to me from being annoyed closing my eyes and kind of accidentally relaxing the body during sleep paralysis, I would go literally out of the body, out of body experience, and I would find myself floating in the room, and there were times where I would be out of body, out of control, zipping around, flying, it felt like I was just like crashing around everywhere, around the room, down the hall, down the stairs, sometimes out of the house altogether. It was crazy. It was um, something that a 14-year-old, uh, boys should not have to go through without any kind of maybe like um you know advice or or a knowledge or anything or or help <laughs> I couldn't get anything I try to tell people 
after the very first time I tried to tell people at school, of course didn't get anything. I got other 14 and 15 year olds to, that don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Adults though didn't really seem to uh, take me seriously with anything. Um, I thought I was, uh, I thought I was literally being um, tampered with or abducted by aliens or something because that's the only thing that could really make sense to me at that particular time in my life. There's a little alien back there, if you see. <laughs> that was for Halloween, put it on the door. Um, but anyways, so these experiences, I'm, I'm, I'm going on too long, and I might not even get to my point because I forgot what the point I was trying to make. It was just something that was on my mind. It was so important, you know. Um, it, it, it amazes me that it's not important to other people. I was never able to, like I mentioned at first, when I wasn't able to describe these situations and these experiences to people, I got literally nothing. But then 20 years later, which was about five years ago, when I found out what the whole deal was, when I saw something for the first time that said sleep paralysis, and my mind just went off like fireworks, like, whoa, whoa I got to look into this, because, you know, first thing that popped in my mind is waking up out of sleep so many times and not being able to move, sleep paralysis. I thought, this is probably what I need to look into, and I did, and it just blew the doors off of my of of the percept the previous perceptions I had of everything, and everything just lined up and made sense. And then from there on out, when I needed to find answers, it was so much easier, so much more likely. I was on it's like I was on a path that I couldn't steer wrong from. I couldn't steer the wrong way off of, and it made it was just that. I just needed that foundation of knowledge, and I think this is important to just about anybody. But also knowing that this life is just a, uh, a very, 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 very temporary experience in the whole landscape of infinity and eternity. That And, you know, it is meant to be taken somewhat seriously as far as doing the right things, but sometimes we take it too seriously in the matters of the physical, you know, instead of um, applying it all and... Uh, no, I don't want to get too off um, course and off subject of this, but um, it's a it was a big deal for me. So, anyways, that is what started everything. Everything else, all the weird stuff that has lined up since then, it all started with this. And it is no coincidence that um, that is the good decisions I was able to make after that were because of that. And it was if I it was so much easier. I mean, I had. Because of these things, I mean, I'm, I'm serious with this. This, is, this was this traumatic that it led to, I was likely to be an alcoholic, but this confirmed it, you know. There was no way I was going to be able to get through life and uh, keep repressing these, uh, these memories and these experiences. Once I was able to get full closure or disclosure of the experiences, from then, oh man, drinking, I mean, I was somebody who was going to be drinking until my last day like it was that bad I would that's all I wanted to do all I wanted to do was drink and hang out with other friends that were just almost as miserable as me and try to enjoy life with them and I'm glad I moved past that but it was such an easier decision I haven't even I mean I haven't even like come close to drinking a drop of alcohol in about five years it's crazy but I really think that everyone needs to have some knowledge or some, you know, some better footing, some better foundation, some better grounding into what they are doing here. If you, yes, ignorance is kind of bliss. It can be bliss. It, this experience can be fully enjoyed without that knowledge. But I think at the particular time that we are at at the moment, we need to know. We need to know better. Um, at this juncture, there's too much confusion out there. Um, all the different kinds of beliefs and ideas that people have that affect the way that their lives turn out and everything, and um, of course affecting other people's lives, and as a consequence, we could be doing a whole lot better. And I guarantee we'd be doing a whole lot better if we knew a little bit more about ourselves, our true selves, and where we actually really did come from originally what we're doing here and what it's all about what's wrong with that huh <laughs>